So Greenlight made a series of vehicles, you know, one of 18 scale. They don't say Dukes of Hazard on them, but it's fairly obvious what they're supposed to be. I'm just wondering how cool they look uh, out of the box, how close they would be to the real thing and how they would look with the General Lee. How does one find this out? Burger. So I'm sure I don't gotta tell you who it is by now, but the one way to find out is to crack it. I do not own this. Uh, this is owned as the registered owner. Obviously it's no longer Denver Pile. Um, it's Mr. Cowie. He owns the, he's the, uh, he's the curator and owner of the Cowie Diecast Museum. Um, he either got it already opened or he opened it himself, but it's mint. It just, it's, the seal's been open. So I asked him a while ago if down the line I can have a look at this and he said yes. So it's already been opened. I just have to be careful. But this, just by looking at it, okay, now I'm going to say this. I'm no expert. I know in the beginning I said green light made one of 18. They made different scales. I had a bunch of their one of 64 scales. Um, I'm trying to think. They did awesome on it. Like, I, it didn't say Dukes of Hazard on the card, but for example, I had Roscoe's patrol car and it was the Greenie. And I believe it said Plymouth Fury on it. That's all it said. Like, the way this says F100 or whatever, the card said Plymouth Fury. But on the door, it said Hazard County Sheriff. And they made so many different ones. And one of 18 and the smaller scales... They even made Sheriff Little's car, just to give you an idea. Like they made the different cars from the different counties, but they were smart to not impose on taking the name or anything. But clearly this works perfect for Uncle Jesse's truck. I'm also gonna say this, Uncle Jesse's truck, when people say that, they automatically think of the 73 Ford F100 usually, I know I do. He had several different trucks. Um, and these trucks were spotted being used in different shows. There's a guy, I believe, on Hazard Blogspot. Um, I'm going to try to find it. If I could find it, I'm going to put the link in the description for you guys. He names all the different trucks used in the show, how many were used, what other shows they were used on. Like, this guy's amazing. And he even points out how you could tell it was Uncle Jesse's truck used in the other show. Like, oh, you could tell by the mirror and it had the mark on the bumper like he does comparison shots. I'm no expert. These guys are experts. So if I, if I say something wrong, please, I'm not an expert. I'm just a collector that loves this stuff. I just associate myself personally, Jesse's truck with this truck here. But I know there was several different Uncle Jesse trucks. So... I think this will look beautiful with General Lee. Um, what else is at the Diecast Museum is there is a Sheriff Roscoe car. Now I know I don't like, actually I'll show you the back. See, nowhere does it say Uncle Jesse's truck, but if you look at this lineup, what they did, it's clear. Like they did a Mustang with two zeros on it, you know, like stuff like that. Um, I think they might have even did Black Tilly, Uncle Jesse's Moonshine Racer car, the Mustang. I know they did it in 164 scale. In 164, they did Huey Hogg's Beetle as well. Like, they did so many from the Dukes line, but I love it. Um, they also did a Silver Screen Machines, one of 18 scale, Daisy's Roadrunner. Okay. Now, the good thing about... I always bitch about the artisan line because you can't open the doors or anything on them. If it's something like a Roscoe's patrol car, where the engine's not really important, it's not like a muscle car, stuff like that, 
I don't mind looking in the window at the interior and the CB. Like for Artisan, I would take a Roscoe car or I would take a, a Daisy Jeep, you know, because it's, it's detailed on the outside. The Artisans are beautiful to look at, guys. You just can't open anything. So the main movie cars, like obviously the General Lee, I would not get it if you can't open everything. So that's the deal. If it's not a main car like that, I would get it, okay? But if it is, I wouldn't get it. I love the way Greenlight packages stuff because they do it in a way nowadays, they know that people are collectors, so it could be put back into the box without too much hassle. Except for stuff like the Fall Guy truck, um, where there's some assembly required. Because once you put the front on it and stuff like that, there's no going back in the box. That's it. But these, they go right back in the box. No harm, no foul. As long as there is no parts to put back on it. And you make sure you keep the original plastic and everything, guys. Any little inserts you keep, no matter how insignificant it looks. If you're going to open something to display it, Throw nothing out. Keep everything you see, okay? And this is gonna be beautiful. This is gonna be beautiful to look at. I can already tell. I'm just being very gentle with everything because when you're putting stuff back into the package, you don't wanna wreck it. You want it being able to be put back in. Um, God forbid down the line, you ever have to sell your collection. I know that it's not something that you want to think about. I just had to sell, well, I didn't have to sell mine, but I wasn't going to pay to put it in a storage locker. I want people to enjoy stuff. So my stuff, I would rather it go to people that are going to enjoy them, right? Um, I kept what I loved the most, like I kept my boxing autographs, I kept all that type of stuff, I kept my 1 of 18 scale movie cars, and in fact I'm still buying 1 of 18 scale movie cars. And the good thing about it is, I can still enjoy the life of collecting and all that, because all my friends do it, and I could still hunt, and yeah, I could still be involved. And there is a killer toy show, by the way, guys, coming up. Um, it's going to be in November. The Kuya Toy and Collectible Show. Now, you guys remember that I had went to the first ever one and videotaped it. And it was It's a friend of mine that puts it on, Marlon. And let me tell you, it is a killer show. It's not a die-cast show, so if you're going for just die-cast... It's not your show. Um, this is a mixed toy and collectible show. So, but there is a lot of die casts there. A lot of cool stuff there. Um, but this is not just die casts. So if you're going for just a die cast show, don't go to this. Well, go and have a browse. I mean, but don't just go and think that it's just going to be die cast. Um, I remember the first show, there was people that were kind of saying, you know, it's huge and everything and it's nice, but they only had a couple die-cast tables. And I felt kind of bad for Marlon because I thought he put on a good show, but he didn't market it as a die-cast show. He marketed it as a toy show. This one's a little bit heavier. So, oh, and by the way, you know what's going to this toy show? Or who, rather? So, my good buddy Justin, that I mention in a lot of my videos, is a huge, huge wrestling fan. Like, even more so than myself. He watches modern stuff and all that. Uh, but he also loves anything WWF. Not WWE, the old classic WWF that I love. He loves it too. He's actually going to be a vendor at the show. It's a huge show. It's Kuya's Toy and Collectible Show. It's going to be at the Niagara Falls Convention Center, which is a huge 
awesome venue. He's bringing in Buff Bagwell, Marcus Buff Bagwell. Do you remember from WC WCW mostly? Uh, my favorite was when he was with Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner and WCW. Bagwell's going to be there for autographs and photos. So I'm going to be putting a link up in the description for that show as well. I'm going. So if you guys can't go, you're going to come along for the ride with me. But give me one second here. I don't want to bore you with this. Ooh, that took a while. Thank me for not torturing you guys. It was a little uh, ties. Now, if I didn't care, I would just rip it out of the box and throw the ties away. But this is not mine. Not to mention, we like to keep care of the boxes, stuff like that. So I untied it so I could tie it right back into the box and put it back the way it's supposed to be. So... And that's why it took so long, by the way. We forgot about that. My morning coffee at night, because I'm the uh, night security tonight at the Kaui Die Cast. So, we will pick it up. Now, I am impressed with the look of it. We're gonna get into the uh, features in a second, but the overall look, I am impressed. Now, usually Jesse's truck, you didn't see it this white. Um, actually, what plate is that on that? Georgia even, oh yeah, that, tell me that's not meant to be Dukes of Hazard. The first seasons, it was filmed in Georgia too, so. And then it moved to California to be uh, done on a set. Um, but yeah, I would not want to get a dirty version. I just don't like the way green light does the dirty stuff. I just don't. Like I had a green light, one of 24 dirty 18 van. I had a couple dirty things by them. Just looks like they sprayed clear coat on it. But, um, I do like the way this looks. Now, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think Jesse's truck did have a black, bench seat like black interior uh like i said guys i'm no expert i'm gonna put a link if i could find the link i'm gonna put it up in the description of all of jesse's trucks like uh, about the expert i told you about um but yeah i would definitely they make so many hazard style vehicles in one of 18 i don't got the space for them but i would love to have the main vehicles, like the main, main ones, like this, a Daisy Jeep, or the Yellow Roadrunner, one of the two, or both. Um, the Yellow Roadrunner, I would love the Silver Screen Machines one. Probably not cheap, though, because you don't see them around. Um, I would take one police vehicle, and you know which one it would be. It would be Roscoe's car. Um... Yeah, I would stick to the main vehicles, but they did so many of them. And I think it's cool. It just, you need space for it, right? Now, underneath, looking underneath, it's obvious to see that the details are not too bad. But it does not have steerable wheels. To me, that's not a deal breaker. Because it's not a main car. Like, if this was a General Lee and it didn't have turning front wheels, pass. Like, the General Lee, you want to have the best of the best, right? But something like this, this is kind of almost like a dress-up a decoration for your higher-end General Lee and your higher-end ones. This kind of used as a, to dress that up. But let's have a look. Actually, no, we didn't even look at all the features yet. So I showed you underneath. The detailing's not too bad. It's got the different colored tailpipe and stuff. Not super detailed, but you're not going to be looking underneath it anyway, right? The front wheels don't turn, but you're not going to play with these. Um, you could see through the back cab window. They did a great job on the inside of it. In my opinion so far, the nicest one of 18 scale green lights uh, that I've seen personally I own two of them. The Black Ghost is gorgeous. Uh, if you look back a couple videos that I did, uh, it's got the real hood pins in that. The Fall Guy truck 
Man, it's like green lights that we're the only guys with the Fall Guy truck. Let's knock it out of the park. Um, I have it. And there's also an unboxing video of that for new viewers. So if you go back in my videos, you can see the Fall Guy truck. Also Bigfoot, one of 18 scale um, by Greenlight. They also, in my opinion, did a great job. I have seen one. One is on my list, uh, but Bigfoot's not huge on the priority scale. So that can come later. Now the hood doesn't open, but like I was saying before guys, on something like this, I look at this like it's a secondary piece for the higher up ones with the opening hoods. So the opening hood is not a deal breaker on this. Uh, like I say, if I get a Roscoe patrol car, they make the Dodge Monaco with the beautiful silver screen machines, the older Monaco, but I would be happy even with an Artisan, the uh, newer Fury or the newer Monaco, I'd be happy e even with that. Like I don't need opening everything on the police car, right? It's a police car, so. Tailgate opens beautiful. Um, even more so fluid and beautiful than my Fall Guy truck. Like this opens better than the Fall Guy truck. Fall Guy opens pretty good, but this opens a lot more fluidly, okay? It's got the antenna on the side antenna doesn't retract or go up or down or anything um it's got the old school truck door uh the mirrors that come off the doors um passenger detail i remember riding in one of these trucks when i was a kid my parents friend had it it was a female that owned it actually but i remember that metal dashboard inside thinking wow when I was a kid looking at that thing, thinking if my head went into that, it was all pretty well metal. Good details on the doors. It's got the chrome in, uh, inserts and all that. The interior looks just like what I remember when I was a kid, guys. So the best for last, the best on this thing, it's funny, would be the uh, driver's side with the gauge and all that. Like I said, if you're getting this, guys, you're doing it to uh, mainly to dress up your higher-end pieces. And Glenn's got a silver screen General E, so this will accent that beautifully. You can see the gauge is probably better through the back window, but they did a good job on her. Yep, if I was going for a, a Jesse truck, I would go with this. But you know, the reason we do all this, we got to check her out. So let's see how it looks with the general. I'll just show you what I mean before we get into the truck. Now this is sealed, so obviously we're not opening it. Uh, but this is the artisan line. Now I think the exterior of these things look amazing. I almost bought a Starsky and Hutch car one of these. But Starsky, the hood doesn't open on it. Nothing opens on these guys. So Starsky, I think I need things to open. But this, Roscoe's car, I'm not fussy about the hood opening or the doors. You could look through the windows and see it's a cop car. You notice, like I was saying, nowhere on this box does it say Dukes of Hazard. But pretty obvious what it is. I mean... Sorry about the shakiness. I'm not complaining. I think it's kind of cool that they did that. I would take one for a big display, an artisan. Secondary pieces, it's like a General E, I would need everything to open. But something like that, not a big deal. Speaking of that, Glenn, if you watch, I just remembered this. We're going to have to... Uh, do a battery check on this my friend they're pretty well dead but we don't want them leaking right so that's not the rc one if you're wondering guys it's the one that makes all the sounds made by malibu international toys they also made two different rc ones a 110 scale i believe and a one of 18 scale the body looks a lot like the joyride general e it's just in plastic version really 
There you go, I could show you a comparison of them. Die cast, plastic. Die cast, plastic. Get out of there, Bo. The oil pan is fine. We're trying to check the truck out. Usually the vintage three and three quarter inch Mego Bo Duke likes to check under the hood of all the cars that come in, but this is the best he's gonna get. Sorry, buddy. At least you could check out the inside of it. Now, just to show you guys all around, I think it looks great. I think they did a great job. Now, keep in mind though, if it was a primary piece, like the General Lee or something with nothing opening, I would be having a much different story about this, but as a dress up piece to go with your higher end stuff, I would take one. Here is a shot of that butt with the Georgia plate. A clear nod to the uh, first few seasons. I mean, they were all supposed to be shot in Georgia. Um, but the first few seasons were shot there. And then uh, they did it on a set in California. Man, that opened smooth. They did a great job on that. As we suspected, no suspension, but we seen underneath. Anyway. Guys, you're not going to believe this. This is a first. Bo will not even fit in his own car. Realistically. He fits in here. Legs under the steering wheel. Nothing funny. I can't believe it. He actually fits in there. Now, do I think a Jesse figure would fit? Probably not, because it would be too big. But that is wild, guys. The resin figures are beautiful. They don't normally fit. I'm trying to get you guys a look through the back. Look at that. You can even put his hand on the steering wheel. That is a Mego 3 and 3 quarter inch Bow Duke from around 19, between 1980 and 1983. I can't remember because I'm tired, guys. Um, but yeah, he fits. And if he would fit in Jesse's truck, probably so would Bo. Um, they did make Amigo Jesse, I believe, and Boss Hog. I would love to try a Jesse in this truck. Can you imagine if he fit? Yeah, I know what Glenn is going to say when he sees this. I have to show Dave that too. That is wild. Be funny to leave Bo in the truck like this and put it back in the box. Just freak the hell out of Glenn. But... He's going to see the video and he's going to know. But I am blown away that that fits. This truck is getting a higher score. Where it lost because of the non-opening hood and stuff, it's going to gain because of both. And as you see, it's a nice side piece for the General Lee. So picture if you had a lot of space or even built a diorama. Having that truck, having a 118 Roscoe patrol car, either a silver screen machine patrol car or an artisan. Now, obviously, if you got the bucks, you want a silver screen machine one, the Monaco. But imagine having that, a Daisy Duke Jeep. Um, just the main ones. I don't think they did a Boss Hog Caddy yet. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they did Boss Hog's Caddy, but... Imagine Boss Hog's caddy with the horns on the front. Usually I do the race poses with the different Mopars, but I think we would know the end result of this. That truck looks great. It really does. I think it would highly complement on a Dukes of Hazard display or a diorama. And that is sitting beside the best of the best of the best, which is a silver screen machines, 118 scale General Lee. That's the best you can get in my personal opinion. Okay. And uh, I don't think it looks bad sitting beside it for what it is. You know, 
it definitely doesn't make it look worse. Like you're definitely not looking at that saying, well, I'll get that piece of garbage away from my general, right? Just one last shot of it. Now this isn't mine, but it's kind of a tradition. So you know what we're gonna do at the very end. And if you don't, you're gonna see in a second here, but it's a tradition. So we don't wanna break it cause it's bad luck. We got Bo still in the truck, but that's okay because uh, this isn't a permanent stay in the cabinet. We're just seeing if this would fit in here. Now, it is a tight fit, guys. It fits. Wow. Now, you know what would be cool that I just thought about? So, you know how this is an Ikea burpee, right? How cool would it be? You see all my, well, not all my movie cars, but some of my favorites. But how cool would it be to have all Dukes of Hazard cars in one of these? General Lee, Jesse's truck here, Roscoe's car, Daisy's Jeep. How cool would that be? Double zero Mustang, you know? Fill her up with as many of the Dukes vehicles as they made. And they made quite a few. And you see, they don't have to say Dukes of Hazard on the box to work, right? Like, clearly with the license plate on it, you know what that's supposed to be. It looks great to me. So, yep, I would give that, before I was going to give it a 7 out of 10, which is actually a pretty good score for what it is. It's like a secondary piece to go with your high-end stuff. I'm going to give it an 8. The reason I'm giving it an 8 is because you can actually fit an action figure in it. And it looks pretty decent in there. So that's getting a retro score of 8 out of 10, guys. The green light 73 Ford F100, a.k.a. Jesse's truck. I gotta say, I'm so impressed that that vintage Mego 3 and 3 quarter inch figure fits in that. I was praying that they would fit into the General Lee. They didn't. It's understandable. I mean, they're vintage figures meant to go into the Mego General Lee, the one with the flip-up roof. They just don't look bad to display, obviously, right? If you don't got resin figures because they're expensive as heck if they're Dukes of Hazard ones. Um, but yeah, I can't believe it. And he even looks good sitting in it. So that's just an FYI if anybody wonders about figures for these things. Also, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of info on this big show coming up in November with Buff Bagwell. I will be there myself. It's either November or December. Hold on, I'm burnt. I'm going to show you guys the goods right now. Duh, it's actually December 9th. I apologize, guys. But now I'm going to remember because it's exactly one week before my birthday. December 16th, I'll be 28 years old. And um, yeah, so that's easy to remember. It's a week before my birthday. So I won't make that mistake again. Uh, and it's easy to remember, too. It's going to be at the Niagara Falls Convention Center. Uh I can't remember, was it at the convention center last time? I think it might have been. Whatever it was, it was a beautiful venue. Um, if you go in, you could look at my videos. I'm talking the place was air conditioned and there wasn't that, am I going to get COVID feeling? Like nothing was crowded. I couldn't believe my friend Marlon put on that show. Like I was like, wow, this is big time. I even told him that. I said, in my opinion, this is big time. Like it reminded me of Hamilton Comic Con, like the layout of it. Um, clearly not as big as Hamilton Comic Con, but it, this is his third one or fourth one, whatever. It's, it's impressive guys. I, I recommend you going if you're in the area, I'll be there. So if you see me, come say hello. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. Please like subscribe and share. And as always, I retreated that time. Happy hunting.